All right, everyone, we have ourselves a beautiful 3v3 on the New World mod now that the replays are working again. I am very happy for this because this is a fun little mod with the best faction of all time, the Traditionalists. Uh, but with this 3v3, uh, it comes from one of Joe's streams, and it was a pretty interesting one. Uh, we have Mr. Enoris here as the Norse Expedition. Lots of shield biters in this army, by the way. Uh, it is actually a little scary. Uh, basically, berserker units with those. Armor just bring Persia, because of course he is. Uh, he needed those uh, beautiful Sparabara. Actually, to be honest, the best looking unit in this, uh, in this roster outside of the Immortals that are up here. But those are just because Immortals are amazing. Then we have Propane playing as the best boys, technically the best girls, uh, the Amazonian Traditionalists. Royal Fox is here. Beautiful, beautiful units. Uh, and of course, they are just basically a better Odrissing Kingdom. Heavy Foxes, regular Foxes, and Royal Foxes are going to basically carve out the enemy in Eagle Dawn here. Uh, but, of course, the attackers themselves are no slouches as well. Uh, starting off with Joe Onnit as a Rhodes, uh, which, of course, have the uh, Rhodian Slingers. So, got to be careful of those boys. On top of that, there's also Ninja Keeper playing as Crete. So, two very powerful ranged Greek factions. Persia might have the Sparabara. But the Cretans have the Cretan Hoplite, so it's going to be a battle of bows between them. That's for sure. And finally, we have Lydia, uh, brought to us by Smart Hawk. Sadly, we cannot see their god tier unit, which is, of course, the uh, Men at Arms fucking busted unit. Uh, I can't wait to see that in battle, because you know for a fact he's brought it as his general, and it's just hiding somewhere. But with that, that is a bit about the intro out of the way. Uh, let's get into this, of course. Any of you who desert their post shall face my wrath. And believe me, you would not like me when I am angry. Aw, sadly the little, the little general speech has been cut off. Poor, poor thing. But, do not desert the post, or he's going to be angry. We we don't know what the end of that threat is, because he left before that. Uh, but you just don't want to see him always angry, because he is the Hulk. Of course, starting off here, we have Rhodes breaking down this corner. Pretty standard move with Ildan, and a pretty good move in my opinion. It is probably one of the best ways to get in there, is to put a breach here. While having some unit towers come along here, could help just... Basically get you a pretty good foothold. However, if you neglect pushing a little further down to like this region here, you're going to find yourself uh, basically faced by defenders uh, along here. Usually they go like this and this. And of course, along here. And it can be a pretty dangerous defense. So you have to make sure you do widen it out. Actually, one of my favorite places to attack, which you don't normally see it too often, is actually this region here. I think it's a pretty good spot to get a nice little opening. And if you have good archers, you just push them right here. You can actually kind of target right into here. Right at the edge of your range. Uh, you're only going to manage to get like one unit in. Actually, I think you can get closer. Yeah, I think you can push a bit closer there. I don't know how far the invisible wall starts. I think the invisible wall starts there. But you might be able to push a little closer. I have not used that style in a while because no one likes to attack on that side. Another one that I found that uh, can be tough to hit is this spot here. Just because of all those walls. So that's why I like that spot over there. And it's <laughs> the defenders don't have as much of an advantage. Chosen skirmishers though. These are uh, Javis? Yeah, they're Javis. But I'm assuming, yeah, Sparabara. They do still have archers. What is their ammunition on this? Yeah, only three ammunition. 
these guys have 10. Of course, Creedon Hoplites pushing their way up. We have some Creedon Infantry. Little boys. Oh! Viking Raiders making their play up, and we can see it. The Lydian Men at Arm unit. Very, very scary boy. But let's see what the Norse are doing, these Viking Raiders. Don't look like they've been caught yet. Where are they going to target, though, is the question. Oh, they're going to hit the men at arms. Bold play, trying to knock them out, but they are going to get an alert immediately. Killed five of them. Holy cow. I'm surprised he hasn't been paying attention because you get alerted that your general's under attack when that happens. Come on, smart hawk. Oh. Is he actually going to manage to get the artillery? Oh my gosh, he is. How much ammunition is left on him? I don't know, but they're about to break that wall down. He needs to hurry. He's actually going to get it. Oh my god, he's going to stop the wall break. Last volley. Hold on, does it stop the wall break? 82, 97. Oh my god, it does. Just stops it. Holy shit. Well, that just paid for its fucking self. Also, it got a new chevron. Uh, but that just paid for itself. That just actually stopped the wall breach. Holy fuck. That is insane. That is genuinely insane. In or as you are a god. <laughs> now, now, now they're going to get slaughtered. They're going to get slaughtered right here, right now. They were meant to die. They deserve to die cinematically. Oh, those poor boys. I'm assuming, yeah, they've got four more. So that you know what they've actually done? Five more. So they've killed ten men at arms. That is, these Viking raiders are gods. They deserve. They are going to be drinking uh, from curved horns in Valhalla. That is for fucking sure. Taking out twelve of those men at arms. Yeah. Killed a bunch on the retreat. Heavy shock cavalry. You do not want to sustain with them. Honestly, I think Joe should have just went around with the light hoplites to, to break them. Because they definitely would have. They were red morale. They would have shattered. And Lydia would not have lost as much on their general as they have. But that's still a healthy general. 69. Nice. Ooh, actually. 69 kills. Let's go. I think they're actually going to be able to tear through these marines pretty well. Note. Ooh, what are we seeing here? Thorax lining up. Lydian's being pushed back. In that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. These guys full ammo. They're actually going to push their boys around so they can get onto that ballista and break it. He's up to 85. Oh, he's still going. Let's see how the rest of the front is doing. We have an initial push in, some Creed and infantry break in. Amazonian Falx is at 49. They're just getting shot. But you know what? That's a sacrifice that the general is willing to make. Ah, the Takabara. I actually love this unit as well. Persia has a really fun lineup in uh, New World, in my opinion. I think it probably has, in general honesty, I think it has one of the more interesting rosters. Out of all these factions. Uh, Creedon, Rhodes, a pretty stood... Uh, well, Creedon, uh, obviously, is very archer-heavy and has a lot of archer-based 
uh, Hoplite, which could do a lot of damage. Even without just those Creed and Toxaltus. I think Persia has a nice list of uh, nice uh, list of good, uh, pretty decent in my opinion. Uh, light infantry, some good spears with the Sparabara, and then the elites like the Immortals, and they have good cavalry in my opinion. But with that, yep, they're finally wiped out. But of course, there's another Viking raider hiding in the mist. <laughs> waiting for that uh, Lydian one. But with that, yeah. The Galatian volunteers, of course, are cutting out. Lydia is another fun one. Mix of Galatians and a mix of uh, Greeks. Oh, he actually brought mercenary Creed and Toxodus. He did. What, what, where is his. Where are those Rhodian slingers? How dare you play Rhodes and not bring Rhodian slingers? How dare Joe? How dare him? Disgusted. Yep, they're starting to cut through. Of course, we have, of course, yeah, look at those foxes. I love the traditionalists for this. I love the traditionalists. They are not the most interesting faction. They are shock infantry. <laughs> they are very one dimensional in their army comp. But they do their one-dimensional very well. Ooh, that's going to be brutal. Look at that. He's actually defending that. Uh, I don't know how he's going to get around, to be honest, with the Viking Raider. Because they are... Though they are gorilla, I do not think they are... Stalk. No. Ah, I hate how it does this. Eh. No, they are stalk. Okay. Don't know why they got discovered so early then. The Fox is one here, 123 kills, nice. Of course they have Persian archers. Oh, they're gonna get right into those Creed and Hoplite. Watch them cut. Of course, this is going to be the end of them because they're going to get surrounded, but I mean, 170 kills. And another Amazonian Falcon coming in. 69, nice. Ooh, and of course, Persian conscripts. Uh, as you can kind of tell, not the best unit there. Presence. What other attack of our steeped in the history of their lands, ready to fight in its name? Okay. Yeah, they are better. Of course, we have a heavy fox actually pushing out and hitting them hard. Look at that. They got eleven. They've gotten twenty kills since I've er. Yeah, 20 kills since I've hovered onto them. Holy shit. Yep, now they're going to pull out now that their attack bonus has dropped. Is the next one coming in? They're already kind of in. Not the best charge with them. They got stuck up on units. But the units that are in are doing some real damage. Now's the proper charge. Yeah, the male to see her pull him back. Yeah, look at that tear throw. That's why I love the foxes so much, man. That initial charge on an infantry unit is just so brutal. Are they going to go into the side? Oh my god, they are. Propane showing how to play shock infantry. I am... You know what? He doesn't get shit this match. He did great. Ooh, that was a great artillery shot. Just tore through them. And this has actually been broken open now, so... The floodgates are open. They're going to have... Be able to start flooding in their infantry on this corner. 
Viking Raider was unable to get stopped. That did stop the charge, though. No, they didn't, actually. Oh, God, those Viking Raiders are dead. That second move uh, did not work as effectively. But over here we have the Cretans actually starting to push in, hitting hard against these Foxes. 200 kills, though, on those Foxes. How are these looking? 122. Ah, proper Sparabara now. Yeah, they're going to start winning there. Actually, they managed to break the Credence, though they died as well. Yeah, last one is these guys. But of course, more heavy foxes are moving in. Yeah, the biggest issue with these heavy foxes, of course, is getting shot. So you just want to be as aggressive as possible when you're in. Once you commit to an engagement, you do not want to retreat. Of course, Mel to Seer. How are these fights going over here? More Mel to Seer on this corner. But of course, now these sergeants are coming on in. In mass. With some more Galatian volunteers, of course. Lorax swords. Those a hoplite will drop. Heavy Fox is still cutting. Yep, Heavy Fox is being forced back. Yeah, they're starting to be able to rotate archers. They did a good job of holding this flank back so that it, while they get uh, pressure in, shield biters in. Yeah. Chosen skirmishers, let's see how they do on the volley. The let eight kills, okay. There we go, that's a proper volley. Heavy Fox is right on into these thorax that were getting lined up to go around. Look at that number drop. Ten off the charger with an infantry. Those guys have paid for themselves. That artillery is managing to do some real damage. Honestly, the biggest weakness of these guys is the archers. They're really shit. 20 morale. Like, they'll break to anything. Honestly, you just need to commit that one in. Yeah. Commit it in, get the charge. See if you can get the rear charge penalty and break them. But of course, you're also just going to just tear through them. Yep, they routed... Uh, what do we have here now? Mercenary Veteran Hoplites. They don't have enough support to be over here. Uh, yeah, they're going to start pulling back. Do they have more infantry? Yeah, they have more infantry. Get these... Oh, they have mercenary myrmidons. Ooh, boy. That's right, they do. Of course, uh, all barefoot, just like in the movie. Yeah, get those boys in. They're going to do some real damage. How's this front doing? Sparbar is still holding. They're actually managing to push them back to the gap. It's what happens if you can't get the foothold well enough. The issue is, is, yeah... The archers here are going to start tearing in properly. Look at that. That is here just dropped. You know what? The Amazonian archers are doing well, and that's... I've never been able to do well with Amazonian archers. I just ignore them. So I'm surprised. Oh, the mobile axemen. Not throwing axes, though. Yeah, oh. I think they are axes, yeah. With that. I wish they threw axes, that would be fun. But yeah. They're dropping. There is still a lot of infantry left on the uh on Lydia. Glacian volunteers, three units of sergeants. Some phalagites. And of course the rest of the Cretan infantry moving in.
I'm assuming uh, they wanted to open another hole with uh, with the other ballista, but they were forced not to, which actually does hurt them very badly. Just not having that artillery be able to fire down this pathway hurts them so much. There's still a lot of infantry on the uh, the traditionalist side, actually on the defenders as well. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. I don't know who's got this. Shield biters just f engaging out like they do. Those guys are going to drop. They do not have. They're already red morale. Why are they? They're attacked in the rear. What are they being attacked in the rear by? Ah. Probably shield biters. You know what? They're doing their job of holding the line. Yep, there's a. They're going to start firing at it. Yep, there, there's the attack. And really, shield biters that are out of control are hitting them in the back, and he doesn't notice. Oh dear. That is brutal. That is a brutal hit. And these shield biters, they just regained control, but they are just in the midst of the enemy formation. They are losing men pretty fast. Next shield biter. Down to 47 men in arms, but 193 kills. I'm ready. Here comes the rest of the infantry, the pikes, and of course the myrmidon and the pick peltist. Two units of scout cavalry. Okay, okay. Ah, he put a ballista there just to be sneaky. Good, 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 good. Yeah, this is going to be a grind for the corner. It's basically, can the attackers make a breakthrough before the uh, defenders push them out? If they push them out, it's over. Yeah, men-at-arms are going to come in and try to do what they can to disrupt the formation. Nice hit. Just tore through those uh, spar bar and they can keep going. Question is, is where do they keep going to? That's way too far out. Yep. Ooh. Nice hit into those shield bears. Or shield biters. But they're down to 22 men. But they were able to get the infantry in. I mean, that is definitely the loss of the general, but he did what he could. Silver chevron, though. They did get a chevron up. Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. Yep, they're just going to tear through those heavy foxes. Poor heavy foxes. Oh, interesting. The veterans actually committed. What else do we got? I mean, I'm just going to focus over here because it is definitely the battle for the corner. Full strength skirmishers. Amazonian archers, I'm assuming, out of ammo or just coming on in. Yeah, they're about to overwhelm this last unit of shield biters. Final stand of these shield biters, men. I'm surprised they're holding on with so little men. How are they still around? Yep, there they go. Yep, they're finally taking that corner. Properly. Now the question is, is do they have the infantry to hold that corner? Uh, probably. Probably. Now their biggest issue is uh, 
now taking the next part. Do they have the ammo? Do they have the men power to break this point? Honestly, if they had that other ballista, they could have just fired like that right into there. Could have been very beneficial to them, and but they were forced to actually move it around, which is a really big play with those uh, the, taking down that initial artillery. Because they needed that one to clear this zone out, and then they needed the second one to clear this zone out. Sparabara moving on in. Hopefully these... <laughs> Hopefully these guys are out of ammo. Because they are really outside of the line, and these heavy foxes are just going to die. They just got cut through. Holy shit. Oh, I see. He's using them as bait. Not the best volleys, though. And they're out. That was a better volley. Thorax coming in. Picked hoplites coming in. To be honest, the Sparbar are probably going to lose that fight. They're just getting trained down. Yeah, those Sparbar are gone. Those Sparbar are going. Those Greens doing what they can in this corner. And they're doing a pretty good job, to be honest. I mean, they're getting shot, but they haven't lost many because of just how annoying this corner is. More Shield Biters coming in. Heavy Fox is coming in. Yeah, of course those Pikes are going to go down. Can't do much with that. I run right into those pikes. Ooh. I don't know how they got into there like that. Holy cow. Apparently the traditionalists are just gods. Dude, I am sure Ninja was pissed at that one. Ninja Keeper. Because somehow the pikes did not stop that. Ooh, that's actually going to be really bad. He did not get those down in time. And those, uh... Oh, nice. The Flamite Swordsman. Yeah. That unit of... Honestly, I think the biggest issue was the misplay on the Pikes. Uh, the Pikes so far have been performing poorly, and they needed them to perform well, to be perfectly honest. And of course, I know Joe's not used to pikes. I'm not sure about Ninja Keeper. I don't know how used to pikes he is. He is mercenary and Myrmidons as well. And they're getting torn apart. Of course, they've traded almost even, and they're getting shot down, too. Those Myrmidons are getting focused because of how dangerous they are. There's still another one of them sitting in the back. Yeah, this corner grind fight is back. We have the heavy, f or the Royal Falks is now moved up. And some Immortals getting ready, so it looks like, yeah. Defenders are running low on reserves, but so are the attackers. They can get a breakthrough to get that Scout Cavalry in. I think they could do pretty well. I just don't see them getting the breakthrough. Maybe if you had a Scout Cavalry ready, now you wouldn't even be able to get it in there. No. To be honest, there's nowhere they could really use the Scout Cavalry. Eagle Dot, I'm not very big on Cavalry on the attack. Because it's just too choke pointy if you're attacking this side. I'll still bring one or two units, so... I mean, like, that's not much of an investment there, that Scal Cavalry. I 
This front's about to break. If that front breaks, it's it's going to be big GG. Yeah, they're just tearing through them. More shield biters. Here comes some of the Royal Foxes. What do we got? Seven minutes left. It's still a pretty even fight. Looks like it's actually pushed a little further towards the attackers, but... I don't know. I'd... I might call this for the defenders, to be honest. Just looking up, I guess there's still a lot, a good and decent amount of sergeants and marines left. Yeah. Still another two, two, two units of mercenary myrmidons, some thorax. Okay. You know what? Maybe I'm a little too harsh on the attackers. The, the attackers can still get this. Oh, especially with them breaking through here. This is where the stout cavalry needs to get in. You need to get this cavalry in as fast as possible. Start rotating. Because you're about to start making huge breakthrough. Get the fucking cavalry in here, and that can win you it. Because... It, if this breaks, and you have your scout cavalry prepped, hold up that Royal Fox unit and get around here. Get around here. I know these guys are out of ammo, but you start breaking through this back line, and then getting around here, you win. You break that front open, you save your men. But I don't see him play. He's not using a scout cavalry at all. God. I, that might screw them. If they're just relying on the infantry fight, they're going to run out of range soon. And these fo royal faxes are really deadly. Like, this is what I mean. Look how big of a gap these guys have. At least Lydia's... I mean, Lydia's getting in here. With an almost dead unit. Why aren't you bringing the scout cavalry in? I'm assuming you're about to go around and behind. I mean, they're just about to be, yeah, ripped apart, because there's just not enough of them. Why aren't you bringing your cavalry in? What are you going to save it for? There's nothing outside that you're protecting with this scout cavalry. What are you doing with it? There we go. I think it's too late. The lines have reformed, and it's going to be hard to get the scout cavalry back in. I think they might have screwed themselves there. Because I know the scout cavalry is not the best, but still! Yeah. Get them in. Why are you sitting them out? God damn it, man. You're waiting for a breakthrough that's not going to happen, and you missed two. You missed two you could have exploited with the scout cavalry, and probably won you guys the game. Because now these Royal Falcons are going to win. I'm going to start being able to reclose this gap. That, I think, was a huge bit of waste. This is a huge amount of waste right here. Wasting flanking potential, wasting... Oh, God. Well, let's just enjoy the melee grind, because that's all he wants. This actually is pissing me off, because if the enemy wins here, he's not going to be able to get the cavalry in at all. Like, he's... Yeah. I think, to be perfectly honest, he screwed himself... What the fuck? Citizen cav. Now that's another waste right there. That two units of citizen cav could have done better on this side. I think it's going to be too late. I don't think he's going to burn it down fast enough. See what I mean? He now can't get in anymore. Why are you pulling the scout cap? Oh my god. You see? He can't get in anymore. Now the scout cap is worthless. Alright. Yep. I'm calling it for the defenders. The defenders won. I think the cavalry was the biggest misplay this match. I'm calling it there. That scout cavalry and Joe Citizen Cav probably could have turned that fight. Uh, about five minutes ago. Would have been able to completely crush that front line and get into the back lines without issue. They probably would have lost that lighter calf and even some of that citizen calf, but it would have it would have kept enough of the 
your forces alive, that it would have been fine. But now you don't have enough men. You can't get into the city. No. It's too late. You're not going to be able to do anything with that scout cap. They already reinforced their lines. And they're able to push you back here. It's fucked. Yeah. They're not going to do shit. No impact because I waited too long with fucking light cavalry. Light cavalry, that's supposed to be used when you have those gaps and just exploit the back lines because they're fast. We're just wasted. How are the citizen cav go? Yeah. Fuck, there's a minute 30. He's not getting in there. That's only a 35. That's another waste right there. Those four units of cap probably could have broken everything. Well, not broken everything. They could have uh, caused a lot of damage to the enemy. Rear charge penalties is what you want them for. Yep, these Royal Foxes are tearing. How are these Royal Foxes doing? 264? Yeah, fucking, they're about to hit. They hit a head hut. Yeah. I mean, what is that Scout Cat going to do? There's just fucking uh, 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 LA Knight Swordsman here now. Yeah, look. You couldn't, weren't able to do anything with it. This is the biggest issue I found in Rome 2, is people are really way too conservative with light cavalry. And even medium cavalry. Like, these units are not too expensive. They're meant to be waste, or sent in like that. Myrmidons did great, though. Holy shit. Those are some good Myrmidons. wonder how the other ones did. Yeah, here it is. It's the end. And let's watch the Myrmidons fight to the, to the end. As they get overwhelmed in their final stand. And there they go. And with that, victory for the defenders. Biggest play on on the defender side that did great was those uh, Viking Raiders, in my opinion. Uh... I mean, the attackers had a pretty good sustained assault. I think they did very well with their infantry. Biggest issue on the uh, or the attackers, the biggest issue they had was their definitely their cavalry. They wasted their cavalry. They had four units of cavalry that could have actually had a good impact, and they just let it die. Uh, biggest misplay for the defenders, I think, was... Uh, hmm. Biggest misplay for the defenders was actually allowing that breach to be opened in the first place. You had enough infantry that you could have covered for it, but it just shattered the center. You had some Elenite swordsmen you could have pushed in there, some more royal foxes. I think that might have been the biggest misplay, but it was just never capitalized on by the attackers, which gave it a defender victory. With that, of course, let's look over how everyone did. Norris here with the Norse. 157 on that hearth guard. 240 on that chosen skirmisher. That's beautiful. Meltasir, 119. Shield Biters 216, 183, 183, 113 on the Thrall, nice, and 101 on that Viking Raider. Uh, that was the one that got into the Ballista. Armored here with Persia, doing his job and holding. Yeah, Norris, I mean, loss is similar, but look at the difference in manpower. Uh, his general didn't do shit, but Persian Archers 108, 186 on that. Immortal and still just just got into yellow. Uh, Elenite Swordsman, 151. Look at those Persian conscripts. Sparabara, which are probably one of my favorite units for the roster. 153, 144. Ooh. Uh, and of course, Propane here. Oh, just yelling at me. Uh, but, of course, the biggest uh, propane here, uh, killing with the traditionalists, that's what they do is they just cut people down, but they just take the casualties. 140 on that healthy Royal Fox, 162, 365. Archer-wise, he did far better than I ever have. 257, 173, 147. Fox is 203, 242. And then heavy Fox is 165, 244, 128. Great job from the defenders. Uh, each doing their job well. Armored Holden with his units. Fucking Propane being the fucking hammer. 
And Nora's just being a pain in the ass with those shield fighters. <laughs> with that elite army. And doing that uh, nice little raid along the flank. Next up we have Smart Hawk playing Lydia. 229 on that uh, men at arms but killed to the last man. But these, these are the uh, mobile axemen. 105, 101 there. Those are where his ranged he brought. Galatian Volunteers, 129. 155 on a Marine, nice. And of course, Sergeant Wise, 148, 158. Greed here. Uh, next up, yeah, those scat have wasted. Uh, Creed and Toxodus, 134, 196, 166, 183. Creed and Hoplites here, 134, 153. How about the Creed and Infantry? 143 on that one, nice. Mercenary Myrmidons, 295, and look how healthy they were. They were just brought in a little too late. And those pikes, wasted, sadly. Uh, but it's hard to use pikes, right? Especially when you're surrounded like that. Uh, Yildan is really tough to use pikes on, unless you can get to the inner, inner keep fight. But of course, Rhodes here, 355 on that pick top light. 175 on that Creedon Tulksoldus. 124 on that Light Hoplite. Nice. 99, so close with that Mercenary Myrmidon, but they got focused so hard. Uh, 141 on those Thorax. And of course, yeah, those pikes just got annihilated. Uh, but with that, that is the Armin Comes. Of course, I'd always like to hear your opinions. Uh, maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm just valuing the cavalry too highly, but I think they could have been very useful at the end. What do you think won or lost? The, uh, won the defenders the match? What lost the attackers the match? Always love to hear your opinions. Bye for now.